like it now. <laughs> it took a little while. So, when is a muscle car and a custom and a coach built car all wrapped up into one? Well, the difference between all of those is just money. <laughs> you know, I mean, normally this would have been a 64 Fairlane that a guy put a hotter engine in, and maybe if he had a few bucks left over, did the brakes. A lot of times when you give people unlimited funds, they do unlimited things, you know, like. Uh, carbon fiber fenders, all this kind of stuff, which wouldn't make sense in the real world, but, and I say this affectionately, if you're like me and the more money than Brains Club, <laughs> you, you put your money, to, to most car guys, their car is their house, it's where they live. Yeah. So they want it to be the dream house. And this is somebody's idea of a dream car. It started life as a 64 Fairlane. Uh, all the carbon fiber on it. I don't think much is left of the 64 family. Certainly not the chassis, correct? That it's is like correct. It's like an Art Morrison chassis? The, there's, there's not, no, it's actually a Ring Brothers. A Ring Brothers. Uh, this Ring is Brothers. a Ring Brothers build. Well, they do excellent work. So you got a Ring Brothers chassis with Ring Brothers carbon fiber. Uh, nothing in the dashboard would suggest that it's a Ford. Um, there's an awful lot Well, it's lot got a ribbon speedometer. Yeah, but that's not necessarily <laughs> Ford. No. No, I don't remember Ford having that ribbon speedometer in 64 Fairlane. I think they did. I'll have to look, but I think that they did have a ribbon speedometer. But, but the they do excellent work, the Ring Brothers. I've had them in my garage. And it, it's really dream cars. They build money is no expense. Their customers are fanatical about having exactly something unique and something different. Than, and this is a classic example of that. I mean... For my taste, I would like some of it to resemble a 64 Fairlane. Well, you see, I think, Jay, that they have done a brilliant job. The 64 Fairlane, I think, is a really pretty car. It is. And what they've done with this car is every body panel on this car has been altered in some way, shape, or form right. from the original 64. But all the essential details of a 64 Fairlane are still present. The headlights, the shape of the hood, right. the trunk lid, the shape of the taillights. Um, so they've, they've gone to great lengths to preserve the basic essence of a Fairlane in a car that is really quite original. Right. The roof's been lowered by an inch, and you really don't notice that at first, but when you stare at it, you say, oh yeah, I guess that's I have to that admit, I didn't notice it because I'm sitting quite comfortably in the car. A lot of times I get in these chop cars and my head is cocked to the side. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Exactly, or, or, sure. You know, no, this is nicely done and very unobtrusive. You don't even notice it. So consequently, that is a custom windshield. Yes. So you've got to make your own plate. I mean, there are things here that the home guy could never, ever do in his garage. Could not dream of. I mean, I think this is the equivalent of going to a Paris couture show and some model is walking down in something that you really couldn't wear out, but it's outrageous and it's wild looking, you know? And yeah. I think this, this is that same sort of deal. If this is a car show, this would be the star of the runway. You know? And you know, well, it was a big star at the 2009 SEMA. Right. The car was finished in 2009 and debuted at SEMA. And uh, it is, uh, to me, a great example of contemporary coach building. Uh, you know, I love the uh, Italian and French coach builders of the 1920s and 30s right. and 40s and 50s. But the fact that that work did not die it still lives on, especially in, in the hands of, of masters like the Ring Brothers. Right, right. The level of detail on this car is just extraordinary. Even the, the rear uh, spoiler on the deck lid, the carbon fiber uh, spoiler, is set into the deck lid and they reshaped the deck lid to yeah. fit the spoiler. Just not, you know, glued on or, or tacked on. Right. Um, and of course the details in this interior are absolutely over the top. Right. Um, right. They're known for their, their sort of architectural bracing they do for right. their uh, under the hood, but they carried that theme inside. The sun visors are just <laughs> amazing. They're like, you know, the sun visors on, on, the, on the Graf Zeppelin or something, you know? Yeah, I don't see, how do they, oh, they come down like that, like, oh, I see. And okay. then they tilt out. Oh, that's pretty cool. So it's, it's right. very, very clever. Um, the, the seat, it's designed to look like a standard 1964 
Ford bench seat. Right. But it's an all new construction with all new fabrics and all new materials, but it just gives you that look. Right, right. Even the steering wheel. Now, the steering wheel is not of a Ford inspiration. It's actually a steering wheel that you should know quite well. 66 Oldsmobile. Yeah. Is that a horn button in the center? Uh, no, it's not. It's not a horn button, no. It's just containing the, the design theme. Uh, the horn is on a stalk. But um, the, uh, the fact that they took these, these items uh, and combined them in such a way, I mean, the steering wheel looks very much at home uh, in this interior. And of course, it's got the usual things that you'd expect in, uh, in, a, in a hot rod build. You know, the built-in radar detector and, and on <laughs> yeah. all of that. Um, although I think that, you know, the car is noticeable enough that I don't think you're going to escape the police because you've got a radar detector in the right, car. Right, yeah. They're going to hear you coming and see you coming. The road manners are actually pretty good considering that this is basically a show car. Yeah. Uh, not really designed for roads, especially not uh, these in Rhode Island, but you know, I'm very curious to get uh, your reaction when you get behind the wheel. Um, we've been in uh, a number of the videos that we've done together recently, driving a number of cars that have the same stated power output, and I think deliver that power in very, very different ways. Right. And what's the power of this one? 551 horsepower. 550, okay. Sorry, 560 horsepower, 551 foot-pounds of torque. Right. Um, it's also a tribute that I think that any noise that you hear in the car is basically from the fact that it doesn't have very much suspension travel, but the body is quite solid. Right. Now it's got this adaptation of the uh, Ford automatic three-speed transmission. The cruise -matic. Yes. Wasn't that cruise -matic? Well, actually, no, cruise -matic, isn't cruise -matic the two-speed? Not sure. There's a C4. No, Ford, no, Ford -matic is a cruise speed, was the two-speed. Right. cruise -matic is the three-speed, yes. Right. Absolutely. And uh, you can select gears uh, by pushing buttons here on the steering wheel. Um, and it's an interesting operation. Uh, I think slightly complex and a little tricky, but uh, an interesting operation, which we'll see work in a minute. But um, it is that thing, you know, you've had a lot of experience driving show cars. And uh, I know that the, the results can be Show-stopping. <laughs> Very different, depending on the car. And of course, the discussion about muscle cars and the idea of putting big engines in relatively small cars, as the Fairlane was. Is that right to the floor? That's to the floor. Got a good kickdown even in uh, the automatic mode, and it's interesting to compare this car to a muscle car from a manufacturer, which of course uh, visitors to the gallery at the Audrain Museum will be able to do in the exhibition. Not just American Muscle, it's running in the museum from June until September. Yeah, and uh, you know you'll see cars like this. Uh, other custom builds like the Chevy Camaro Mule, uh, as well as uh, the new Dodge Demon. Uh, my unexpected favorite, the uh, AMX uh, 390, which is I think one of the best muscle pony cars yeah, ever built car. in America. Yeah, yeah. Um, and uh, you know some of the other usual suspects and some of the unusual suspects. Allard J2X. And uh, Bizzarini 5300 uh, Strada. Yeah. 
you know, um, looking at what the definitions are can really be an interesting thing. But it is very funny the way it delivers power. It's not that sort of, I don't know, visceral thing somehow. Uh, yeah, it's uh... It's like a wise guy, you gotta slap it around. Yeah. <laughs> you, know, you, you know, when you drive like the Porsche Cayman or any of those, you're very delicate, everything. Here, you, you gotta manhandle it. You gotta put your foot right to the floor with both, you know. You get a bit more sound than fury though sometimes. Yeah, but it shows you just how much goes into building a car. Uh, the R&D you have to do. I mean, you could spend another year on this car perfecting it. It would take that long. Yeah. And even in shaking it down, then this car has less than 500 miles on it since it was built. Okay. You know, it's not even bro it's, it's not even broken in, really. Yeah. This is not like a modern engine where, you know, it's run on a dyno for two days before they put it in the car. It's, right. I get, I get used to it now. I mean, I'm so I'm, I, I get it. The steering is a bit, well, a bit American, like a, a, yeah. a big American car from the '60s. It, you know, it's not that pers you're not going to get Porsche-like tactile feelings driving. Yeah. It. But it is fun. The idea of uh, putting all this together is a, uh, is I mean, a remarkable we're, thing we're, as well. We're spoiled. We live yeah. in a world of 1,000 horsepower Teslas and demons with 1,025 horsepower. You take a car from the 60s, you bring it up to 550, it's huge. This yeah. would have been, you know, 15, 20 years ago. Oh my God, this is the end of the world, this thing. It's unbelievable. You didn't but, have race cars okay, that produced I mean, yeah, we're so spoiled horsepower. now that, how much, 550, no, what's that? <laughs> I mean, this is real. you using the manual shift this then, or the uh, kick down? It kicked down on its own. Yep. And if I press this, it goes back to second, right? Yes. Yeah. Again. You're moving. You know, we live in a world of 10-speed Ford trucks. Yeah. <laughs> Seven speeds is common now. So three speed seems, you know. A three speed to actually deal with once you get 560 your head horsepower it's actually, and, and uh, it's actually very nice. I like it now. <laughs> it took a little while. It isn't what I expected it to be, though, somehow. What did you expect it to be? I expected it to, to be a little smoother in its delivery, but that's not obviously what the builders intended. Right. You know? I should take the name seriously, Afterburner. Right. You know, it's like a, uh, a jet airplane where you, uh, where you power up and then you power up. Yeah, I mean, I like it, you know, it, it's a bit like, for example, I'm going straight, but the wheel is a yeah. bit off center. Well, that happened to me as well when I made that U-turn. It's a, uh, a full lock on this car is uh, quite the adventure. The, uh, I think the combination of the power and the interesting details of the build oh, it really make this quite special. Um, I know you have, certainly. I've driven a couple of uh, show car specials, and they didn't drive nearly as well as this car does. No, oh, it actually tries. You know, it tries okay. Yeah, and you, you just have to remember settling in. When you're driving modern McLarens and all that kind of stuff, it takes a little getting used to the go. <laughs> well, again, that whole idea that you can take something and 
transform it. You know, there's a lot of conversations about resto mods. This is a full custom. Yeah. It is based on a 64 Fairlane. It's not pretending to be a 64 Fairlane suddenly with modern Mustang GT underpinnings, right, you know? Right. And uh, I respect it so much for that. And you realize uh, every part of this is custom. Exactly. The door handles, everything. the door locks, everything. You know, most people just do motor, maybe brakes. They had a little suspension work. Uh, everything's been modified on this. And to great effect. You expect to see Sheriff Buford sitting over the end of this. <laughs> we hope not. This is a fun vehicle. Thanks you for sharing know, it, it with us, fun. Jay. It is fun. And it's like driving a chest of drawers that's been laid down flat on its back, and you're sitting on a going down a hill. You know what I mean? <laughs> you know what I mean? I, I, but it's fun. I mean, you've got more play in this wheel than. But once you get used to it, I actually like it now. Yep. For me, it was a bit of a, a dream disappointment, but you're absolutely right. Uh, what, what, it is yeah. absolutely amazing once I realized what it is. And That's once it warmed point. up, yeah. this engine has no miles on it. It's still got braking oil, I'll bet. And, and, but once it gets heated up and it, it coughs and clears its throat a little bit, it, does go, it goes very well. Well, we've had a great afternoon with the Afterburner. Here we go.